Nuggets. Hello, how you doing? Um, okay, so I wanted to, uh, I was trying to figure out what to do today. I want to try and put a video up every day. And I thought, you know what? Fuck it, let's talk about some TV. <laughs> uh, something that isn't politics and it isn't bullshit and it isn't frustrating. And uh, it's all escapism and happiness. So I wanted to run through some of the TV shows that I think you should watch. Some of them are obvious. Some of them you will have heard of, but you never know. There might be someone out there who hasn't heard of it or has been thinking, should I bother watching that? So this is a random list. I just went through it, spent like half an hour this morning thinking about what we want to watch and or what we've watched and what we think is fantastic. Uh, and they're in no particular order. Um, all right. First one uh, is a show called The Last Kingdom. Now, if for some reason you've been under a rock and you haven't heard about this show, it's on Netflix, I think. Yeah, it's on Netflix. Um, I think it's in its fourth or fifth season now. Um, and it's um, about the uh, Norman invasions of Rome, of, of Rome, of England. <laughs> um, and it's about the rise of King Alfred and the people who succeeded him. And it's just an amazing, amazing show. It's so beautifully made. Like... They're aware of their budget, so they don't overspend, and yet you never feel the budget. It just feels beautifully intense and close. And I have to say, I think it's some of the best performances I have ever seen on a historical TV show. They're all just amazing. You know, the worst actor in it is the lead guy, and he's a great actor. So the guy, the, the guy who plays King Alfred is amazing, and his wife is amazing. And it's just beautiful performances, and it's fascinating. Um, and that's a real binge. So there's like at least four seasons. So you could binge through that. Anyway, The Last Kingdom. Next one is one you may have missed. Just in case. This is a bit of a Sopranos moment where a lot of you will go like, what the fuck? Everyone saw that. Rome. If you did not see Rome, it's a little frustrating because it just kind of ended. They ran out of money or they didn't want to make it anymore. Uh, but Rome is about Julius Caesar. It's about that extraordinary period in Roman history where there were just so many names that um, still survive to this day. Basically, we know about them to the day today. Uh, great people in Roman civilization. You know, the Caesars, the Brutus, the Pompey, the Cicero, Cato. Was it Sully? Was that before Sulla? No, Sulla was before. But it's the, it was this extraordinary period of Roman history, uh, Octavius, which kind of really defined what we now consider the Roman Empire. When we think of the Roman Empire, it's this period. And it's fascinating. And again, I think it actually cost quite a bit of money, but it's not all battle scenes. There's very few battle scenes, actually. It's about the personal journey of Caesar and of two soldiers in his army and what happened and what their life was like outside of the army and, and how difficult life was. And it's just a beautiful show. And I think there's two or three seasons of that. That's HBO. Um, and it's fantastic. So if you haven't seen it, great performances all around. A couple of... <laughs> Dated performances from the English actors, but um, uh, the guy who plays Cicero is terrible. But overall, must-watch show. It's really good. Um, I'm not going to say that one. Okay, I am going to say it. The Next Generation, Star Trek. Yeah, I know. I know. But it's one of those shows where it's almost laughable now when you look at it. It just doesn't... You think it doesn't hold up to modern TV shows because, you know, of the way it's made. It's, it's a cheap, you know, sci-fi set. But it's such a beautiful show. It is such a hopeful show. The joy and love in that show, particularly now, there are some episodes you can watch of Next Generation that will leave you crying, not, not necessarily just because the writing is beautiful, the performances are beautiful, because they're, as I said, they're very dated. But the, the image of what Rodenbury wanted to create, you know, and what the team who made The Last Generation, the world they wanted to paint, the universe that we could have, is just beautiful beautiful and it's real escapism i mean it, you want to live it's one of those universes you definitely want to live in the next generation universe so if you haven't watched it for a while go back and binge it it's fantastic it's still a wonderful show okay next one is a comedy norsemen um it's an obscure scandinavian comedy about vikings again i think i might be obsessed with vikings um or, or normans but it um it's a fascinating show. It's really funny. It's very dry Scandinavian humor. Um, 
It's slightly off kilter. It's kind of brutal in some places. And like I said, very dark. But it's beautifully made. I think it's on its third season now, maybe. Really funny, though. So Norsemen, that's Netflix, too. Um, the Next Generation, is that Netflix? I don't know where you can get that. I think Netflix. Anyway. Uh, okay, so this one might have passed a few people by. I can't remember whether it's Amazon or Netflix. It's called The Nick. The Nick. K-N-I-C-K. So it's Colin... Farrell, Firth, Colin Firth, I think, <laughs> the guy in Children of Men. Anyway, um, and it's set in uh, a hospital at the turn of the last century, so 1900. Um, and it's amazing. It's just this fascinating, again, period piece, this fascinating look at that time, at the, the huge leaps that were made forward in the medical field in that time. That period of time is extraordinary. You know, the the... The benefits that we have today, all of the things that change the nature of medical procedures and what it was like to be sick and how we can now deal with it in such a, so much of a better way, it was defined during this period. And this is amazing. And the characters are deep and they're complex and they're flawed. And it's not just about, you know, isn't a hospital fascinating? It's not like casualty if you're a British uh, person. It's not like that. It's like deep in depth into these flawed characters and the struggles of running a hospital and the drive they had to improve and discover new things. And it's fascinating, absolutely fascinating. The Nick. Okay, very dark British comedy, which I don't think many Americans have heard of, and it's a tragedy. <laughs> and it's called Inside Number Nine. So this is made by the guys, or some of the guys, I'm not sure how many involved, who did a show called, a British TV show called League of Gentlemen which was another very obscure dark comedy. You kind of know all of the group in the League of Gentlemen because you've seen them in other stuff. Like um, Mark Gattis, I think his name is, um, has done plays now and he does like really uh, horror stories, ghost stories on uh, TV and film uh, and theatre. But he also played the brother in Sherlock. He plays Sherlock's brother and I think he wrote uh, Sherlock. Uh, or one of the people that wrote Sherlock. But Inside Number 9 is like, um, what do they call that now? A collection of stories. Anthology. It's like an anthology based around the number 9, right? Uh, or uh, I think, are they all in the house? In a house that is number 9? But anyway, they're very loosely connected. They're just, they're, it's kind of like a, a Twilight Zone, but much darker, much more obscure, a little bit scary, a little bit creepy. It's not a horror show. It's nothing like that, but... They're so creepy, these characters, and they're so invasive at times. They're so close and personal. You can almost smell them. It sounds really weird, but when you watch it, you'll kind of get it. It's grotesque. I think grotesque is a good word for it, but it's so well written. And they're amazing performers. So um, inside number nine. And now I've realized not on the list, but if you haven't seen it, The League of Gentlemen, which is another British TV show. It's very British. It may not have as widespread appeal because uh, it's kind of obscure but it's a fantastic show if you haven't seen it and if you're an anglophile definitely watch the league of gentlemen okay next one is actually more well known but i'm going to put it on here anyway um peep show just in case you missed it there were like seven series i think there were um it's all shot in first person which is just very odd for a show um but it's uh mitchell and webb so it's david mitchell and robert webb um as roommates as flatmates um and just life right but they're always talking directly to camera because you're always in first person view and it's a really fascinating perspective actually uh it's got some great characters in it the writing is great david mitchell's hysterical robert webb is hysterical um so they're fantastic it's a wonderful show it's very funny and um again it's got that kind of british humor in it which is it's a little sad a little cringy a little dark you know, the, the heroes are actually all failures. <laughs> it's that kind of thing. But it's beautiful. It's beautifully written. God, Robert Webb just popped another show into my head, which I definitely know you haven't seen, called The Smoking Room. Um, it was a little two-season uh, British TV show based in the smoking room of a company back when we all used to smoke. <laughs> Uh, and it was all these people who were gathered gather together to smoke in this room. And it's just like a character drama. It's a it's in between a, like a Alan Bennett piece, but it's more funny than that or a little more accessible than that. Maybe not so theatrical, but it's beautiful. The Smoking Room is another one. Um, okay, 
This one, I think I've seen billboards all over LA, so maybe everyone knows about this now, but What We Do in the Shadows. Maybe you all know about it, but uh, it was a movie with uh, Jermaine, Flight of the Concords, Jermaine Jackson, I want to say Jermaine Jackson, yeah, Jermaine Jackson, um, about vampires. It was a comedic dark look at vampires. Well, they made a TV show of it. Now, I'm seeing billboards, so there may be an American version as well that I don't know about, but I'm, I've seen the British version which is fantastic, which has Matt Berry in it, who was in the IT crowd and Toast of London, and he's hysterical. There's only one Matt Berry. <laughs> Snuffbox, oh my God, there's so many shows I can tell you about. Um, there's only one Matt Berry, so you know who it is, and he does things his way. Garth, Mering Garth Meringi's Dark Place. Anyway, What We Do in the Shadows. Great, uh, dark, kind of scary, but not, again, it's not horror, it's just uncomfortable. It makes your skin crawl a little bit. Um, comedy about being a vampire in the modern world, right? <laughs> and um, what they do in the shadows. It's fascinating. It's it's really funny. Uh, it's definitely a binge watch. You can watch that whole thing, I think, in... There's only like two, three series. You can watch it all in one night, uh, or maybe two nights. It's really good. Uh, okay, next, Amazon Prime. I remember this one. It's Hannah. It's really good. It's really fascinating. It's I'm pretty sure it's based off of the movie with Eric Banner and the girl whose name I don't remember. But they made a TV show of it. Hannah and it's really good it's really interesting I we just watched the second is it second or third season the most recent season uh, again we really enjoyed it we kept going through it it maybe trails off a little bit but the first season's fantastic and it, it's a very good show it's a very good show and it's got good action it's got really good driving plot like it keeps moving forward you're fascinated about what's going to happen next and uh, yeah we did you know what I just remembered probably should take it off the list as good as it is in this l most recent series of hannah it kind of started to repeat the storyline like the same thing happened three times in a row which was a little frustrating i still think it's worth a watch certainly the first season is fantastic and actually the movie's really good with eric banner as well um totally out of left field comes in the men who built america <laughs> okay it's a history channel thing it's a documentary and it's very history channel which means that there's a lot to hate about it, right? It does that thing where it comes back after a commercial break. So if you're binge watching it and there's no commercials, it just repeats the information you just watched. Like Carnegie Rockefeller in America. And you're just like, I just saw that. But the content and the story it's uh, relaying is really fascinating. It's about these titans of industry, right? In in the period that really built America into what it is today, the men who built America. The Carnegie's with steel, the Rockefeller's with um, oil, the uh, Vanderbilt's with the railroads, and um, Ford with the cars. I mean, like, it's it's about these people, who these titans of industry, J.P. Morgan for banking, who created the world we're in right now. And these people, some of these people were pretty fucking dark people, right? But it's a really well-made show. It's a fascinating subject matter. The performances are surprisingly good. Um, it's not great. I think it's just the subject material is so interesting. And it's well-produced. They put some money into it. Um, and uh, they made subsequent series like the, the, the Men Who Built. There's another one after that. But um, The Men Who Built America is the one that's really good. So it's worth watching. And I think you can get it right now probably anywhere. Stream it anywhere. Um... Okay, I'm just going to put this one in here because everyone has seen it, but just on the off chance you haven't, I don't know what the fuck's wrong with you if you haven't, but The Boys. It's the best show on television. <laughs> like, Well, if you like that kind of show, right? So Laura and I are done with superhero movies. We just are. It's the same fucking story and over and over again. And then there's The Boys. <laughs> and it is a completely new take. And it is dark and compelling it is beautifully written it is game of thrones in the modern era with superheroes um it is absolutely beautifully made beautifully constructed television the performances are fantastic and they seem very over the top like carl or keith urban one of the urbans is in it and it is a little over the top but it's okay it's so perfect for this context it's who's the guy not randy quaid it's randy quaid's son is in it apparently um I didn't know he was Randy Code's son. I know he's in it because I watch it. Um, but it's beautiful. It's about superheroes and what's actually going on. And are they really heroes? And a group of people whose lives have been dramatically affected by what the superheroes have done. And so now you have all of this 
tension between the TV image of superheroes and what people know. And it's very appropriate for this current time, um, but it's pure escapism. It's it's just fucking awesome. <laughs> it's a great show. It makes me want to never write again. It's like, geez, this is a great show. I can't write like this. All right, now we're going to calm things down. I've only got two left. Uh, this is on PBS, which, by the way, you should always be watching and supporting in any form. It is so important for this country we have PBS. I'm not talking about as a left winger. <laughs> We just need public television. We need this kind of content because it, it raises up our, our... You don't have to watch the news, right? You can always just watch their TV shows. But it raises our education level. It, it treats us with respect. It respects its audience, which regular TV doesn't. So we need this. Uh, Poldark. It's a British TV show from... It's a remake of an original show. Don't watch the original. The original was very dated, and at the time it was good, but it doesn't hold up. But the new Poldark, I say new, I think it was 10 years ago it started now, but it's really good. There's like five or six seasons. Um, it's a binge thing. You can watch the whole thing. Um, it's just a fascinating look at that life. It's a look at life in Cornwall and London and mining, and the characters are beautiful and interesting, and it's very romanticized, right? And it's very, it's a little bit, um, who are those two filmmakers who made all the period dramas in England. Not Mitchell and Webb. I've got Mitchell on the web now. Merchant Ivory. It's a little Merchant Ivory. A little bit more um, realistic than that. But it's it's romanticized. But it's still beautiful. It's a beautiful story about someone coming back from fighting in America. Uh, in the colony wars. Coming back to England and trying to forge a new life. Um, uh, and it's just fascinating. It's a fascinating show. Good characters. Great performances. Um, and a lot of actors in it that then went on to do even greater things, but that role defined them. Um, yeah, it's one of those shows that once they did it, they will always be that person from Poldock. So it's worth seeing it. And then last on the list was a real surprise one because we didn't think we were going to like it, but we loved it, is The Great. So this is a, they call it a comedy. I guess it's funny. I wouldn't call it that. I would call it a slightly obscure, abstract look at history. Um, it's called. It's about Catherine the Great in Russia, and about how she became Catherine the Great, right? But it's her as a young woman going into Russia at this time of real instability, and it's just fascinating. It's just beautifully performed. The performances are beautiful. The writing is so fucking tight, um, and they put a lot of money into it, and. It's a, just a great show. I think there's only one season, so you may want to wait <laughs> until there's a second season, because if you're like me, one season is frustrating when you get to the end of it. Uh, but yeah, Catherine the Great, that's also an Amazon, I think, um, who are knocking it out of the park recently. That's it. I just wanted to give you some TV shows, so you never know. Here's the quick list again. The Last Kingdom, Rome, The Next Generation, Norsemen, The Nick, Inside Number Nine, Peep Show, Smoking Room, I'm going to add that because you should watch that. What We Do in the Shadows, Hannah, both of which you should watch the movies as well. The Men Who Built America, The Boys, huh? Paul Dark, and The Great. Ray Little Nuggets. Have a good day. Bye.